Hey everybody, Steve Sheets here with Ghost Ranch Communications doing a tutorial today about how to put live polls in your PowerPoint presentations using Microsoft Forms. There's lots of third-party softwares that can do this kind of thing for you, but this is something that is native to Microsoft. While I think that makes it easier, it is not without its quirks. So I'm going to jump to the meat of what this is and how to do it really quickly. Then we're going to spend a little while talking about some of the problems that I've had when doing it and uh, how to avoid or quickly fix those problems when they do arise. How this will look in your PowerPoint is, um, this is how I'd recommend having it look. This is the default appearance. Basically you see the question here, there's a QR code where people can go on their phones. Now this is a multiple choice question. There are lots of different kinds, but in any case, it's gonna be pretty similar to this. And uh, yeah, it gives you a good way to get your audience's attention and also get some data and then it will update live. And I'm going to go ahead. I've got this on my phone here. I'm going to submit an answer so we can see it update live. And there you go. Um, you can see this kind of other uh, option where we're asking them to please explain their answer in question two has become pretty popular. So maybe at this point in the presentation, you'd want to jump over and see what people are saying. So by default, it gives you a word cloud, but you can hit all responses and see right there just exactly what people are saying. That's sort of how you're gonna interact with it in the presentation. And again, there's different question types that are gonna give you different things, but this gives you the gist of the look and feel and how the interface kind of works. And when you are in slideshow mode, one issue you're gonna have is that like if you're used to mouse wheeling up and down through slides, that might actually interact with this interface instead. So at that point, I'd recommend using the presenter view to change slides or maybe the page down button or arrow keys. Clicking in this can have some different effects too. So just clicking to go to the next slide is not something that's going to work. So say I've got a list of questions that I wanna turn into a poll. Before I go to insert a form, the first thing I'm going to want to do is go to a blank slide. This is very important because once you insert a form into a slide, you cannot delete the form from that slide, uh, which can make it very frustrating. So go to a blank slide and then um, if you go up to your insert tab, you might have a forms button here. If you do not, go to file, get add-ins. And forms should be pretty close to the top of the list that pops up here. If it isn't, there is a search bar. You can type in forms there. When it comes up, go ahead, hit the add button, and then you will have it. And now that I'm on my blank slide, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to press the forms button. And you can see I can do quizzes, I can do forms. I've got some uh, other polls that I've created before right here. But I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna hit new form. And this has opened up a new window in my browser, which I'll bring over here so we can see it. And uh, tutorial form with a lowercase l. And I had already typed up my question and answers. I had it in a multiple choice format. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm going to say choice. I'm gonna jump back to my PowerPoint at this point. I'm just gonna hit Alt tab to do that quickly. And I'm going to copy this question, paste it in here. And when you're pasting text in and it's formatted, you end up with an image of the text. So go ahead and delete that. And then I'm gonna hit Alt-Tab again, go back to my questions, going to copy these, Alt-Tab back to here. And in option one, I'm gonna go ahead and hit paste. And you can see it's giving me a picture again. I'm make sure I delete that. And then it filled all the rest of mine in for me and it left this option two that was pre-populated down at the bottom of my list. I'm going to delete that. And the way I had it set up was just in case people had other, they could um, then go to question two and kind of detail whatever they meant by other in that. So I will say, uh, let's add a text question at this point. I'll just paste that in there. And then I think this is looking pretty good. I don't need any other questions for what I'm doing right now. So I'll just go ahead, I'll delete that. I'm not really worried about adding a description even though it's prompting me to. 
But I do want to control how this looks a little bit. So I'm going to click this style button. And there's all sorts of like different looks and feels you can go for. It has some suggested ones. It has some colors you can pick from. And this just changes how the, um, the question and answers that people bring up on their phone or on their computer, it controls how that looks. It's not going to change how it looks in your PowerPoint. There's a lot of these like colors that you can pick from and, and all kinds of stuff. But basically it all comes down to patterns. If you want to go with a, a planar look, I'm about to show you a trick for that because you can add an image. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to my PowerPoint and I'm just gonna make a shape that is um, you know, roughly screen shaped and let's go ahead you know let's make it let's make it blue and i'm going to right click on this shape i'm going to say save as picture because you know that's one of my powerpoint theme colors and it'll help the form match our presentation if it is one of the colors from our presentation so i'm going to go ahead and uh, save that on my desktop press alt tab to jump back to my web browser and I'm going to upload that picture. There we go. Now I've got a nice solid blue background. It automatically generated a complementary color for me. If I wanted to get a hex color from my PowerPoint, I could jump back here. I'm going to go ahead and change my shape. You'll notice too, I don't have an outline on this shape, um, which PowerPoint adds by default. If you do have an outline on your shape, you're gonna to wanna to remove that before you go ahead and save it as a picture. But anyway, let's see. Uh, complimentary color I wanna have there. Let's go, with, let's go with this blue. I can uh, right click it. And let's say more fill colors. And this gives me the hex code right here. I want to highlight those numbers and letters, not the pound sign next to it. Copy those. Alt tab back to my form. Paste those in there. And now I've got something, you know, from my PowerPoint. And you can see it's, it's going to just highlight some things that color. Let's go back. Um, and yeah, there's different styles you can do. You can preview what these actually look like with the preview button on a computer. I don't like a lot of these because they have a start now button, which just feels like an extra layer. Um, you can click this mobile to see how it's gonna look on a mobile. And go back. I kinda like this default just fine. And uh, if we preview that, you know, we can see you just get into it. There is no start now button looks nice and simple on a computer and on mobile. I'd imagine most people are going to be seeing it on mobile, especially if you're prompting them with a QR code. It's really the only way to get there. Um, anyway, this is looking really good. I think it's ready to go. So I'm just going to minimize this and I'm going to delete this rectangle because I don't need it anymore and go back to this page where I uh, inserted a poll. I'm going to say present for interactive meetings. And it automatically found the one that I created. It's got the QR code on there and it's ready to go for people to use um, during my presentation. So as I said, in addition to talking about how to do this and what it is, I've talked about some of the problems that I ran into and I will say these are easier and better than a lot of the other softwares I've seen for doing these live polls, but it is very buggy. One way to reduce problems is to just let this thing take up the whole screen and have it be the only thing on the screen. When I put other things on there with it, it just seems to break more often. And these will break every time if you were to put an object on top of it. You'd like say I wanted a little logo in the corner, huge mistake, don't do it. It's going to make the form break. Just let it be the only thing on here. You're gonna save yourself a lot of trouble. If any other circumstance where this just isn't updating with responses or it's giving you some kind of an error message, best thing you can do to fix it really quickly is go ahead and just hit Control Shift D to duplicate the slide. Um, there is not a refresh button on these. Once it breaks, there's kind of nothing you can do. But if you duplicate the slide, it kind of forces a new version of this thing to be created. 
um, I can go ahead and delete the old one. I don't need it anymore. And this new one will behave. I can even go ahead here and we can test it right now. I'll go ahead and pick an answer and hit submit. And you can see the answers are coming in. There's a response submitted, the graphic changed, and it is updating for me. So that's great. I know it's working. And I know you guys are going to want to test these. I certainly like to test these. But now it's got an answer in there, and I've messed up my form. So we're going to go back into Microsoft Forms website here, and I'm going to go to Responses. I can view results, and there's these dots here. I can delete them one at a time. Or if I've had a bunch of people doing some testing and I just want to delete all the responses, I can delete all responses right here. Go ahead and confirm that I do want to delete it. I'll minimize this again. And you can see my form goes back to having zero responses submitted. I hope this was helpful for you. Again, I'm Steve Sheets, working for Ghost Ranch Communications. We make the art for storytelling and would be happy to help you with end-to-end -end presentation and elevation as well as all things marketing collateral. Uh, we've got a whole talented team ready to help you out, so please feel free to reach out to us. We'd be more than happy to hear from you and hope you have a great day. Thank you.